Yeah, I remember when I first got sent the script, I'd already, I think I'd done one series of Chancellor, which had become this big prime time hit. And I read Close My Eyes, and I loved the script, and I met Stephen, I think I had to meet him about four times to get the part, but I was really mad keen to do the movie because I saw it as sort of taking my career taking a different sort of path. I was already being sort of geared towards prime time TV. I'd agreed to do another series of chance. I was being offered a lot of sort of prime time telly stuff. And this felt like a very different direction. And I see it as a very important film really because of that. Because when I finally did it, it sort of just opened things out for me. And instead of going down that prime time television path, it, my sort of career started, I started to do small interesting films and do theatre and it just took it away from where the whole sort of chancellor thing was, was guiding me. So I remember at the time being really, really keen to do the movie and because I could see that, uh, that it would be a, a very different thing for me to do. I never really saw it as a film dealing with the taboo subject because it was so well written that it, it never come across as something that was sort of... I mean, I, I suppose a story about a brother and sister falling in love is pretty unusual, but um, it was dealt with so intelligently and smartly by Stephen and so delicately. And I thought it was a very unusual piece because it, it proved to be successful because a lot of people who saw the film actually unusually find themselves rooting for the brother and sister as a couple at certain points in the movie. They can see how the, the two of them have ended up in this situation. And whereas we all can imagine the big commercial incest movie where dun, 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 <laughs> it's all very shocking and people get very upset and it's all very dramatic. Stevens was much more unusual, much more delicate. And because of that, I didn't ever feel that oh, I'm doing a movie about a taboo subject. It was, it was a love story. It was a love story about two people who f fall in love and unfortunately they happen to be brother and sister. <laughs> We, d we talked a lot, and, and he is unusually he is one of the directors who does like to rehearse, which is very good. We, we, we talked a, a lot about just the, the balance of the relationships. I mean, the thing, about, the thing that I, I, I so admire about Stephen's work is he never deals in very sort of definite, absolute things. It's not good and bad. It's not right and wrong. He's, he's much more subtle and much more delicate. And so the rehearsal period is really about just perfecting the nuances so that you're... That, his films unusually, and it's a sign of how good a writer he is, are, are difficult to play because you have to try and keep everything open all the time. You can't be too definite. You don't fall in love. You're not playing somebody who's very good or very bad. All his characters are fallible. All his characters are human. And all the situations that they're put in, it's about being delicate and keeping as many options open as possible. So his rehearsal period is really about that, about just... Um, of, of refining the subtleties, really. I think at the time, uh, yeah, Alan was. Pr I think it was. Um, I think it was that time, or not too long afterwards. He had three movies on in London and was starting the West End. <laughs> you know, he was very, he was very big at the time, Alan. Um, what's it like working with Alan? It's, it's always, it's always great working with quality people, and he's a, you know, he's a very smart, intelligent quality actor, so it was a treat to work with him. I, I love that journey. I lo I, you know, the, it's always a pleasure to play characters that do travel, and he very much, you know, it's, it, his relationship with, with his sister sort of comes out of nowhere. It's a shock. It sort of just happens. And then I always, I always, I always treated it like it was playing somebody who falls madly in love with somebody and then becomes obsessive and becomes obsessed and can't let it go, and becomes addicted to it, and becomes, you know, slightly, well, more than slightly unrealistic about its potential and the possibilities of it, and, and it was pretty upsetting, you know, it gets to a pretty upsetting place where the, you, you, you're sort of on a downward spiral, there's only really going to ever be one outcome, and it's not going to be that healthy, and, you know, it, it was, it's always interesting playing those parts, to travel on those journeys, and, um, you know, I, Anybody who's fallen madly in love inappropriately can relate to it. I don't think you have to have slept with a sibling. I'd be very surprised if there's a film about this subject that's been made that comes anywhere near to it in terms of, you know, 
making people understand how it happened and, and, and the sort of difficulties and complexities of that kind of relationship. I, I, I haven't seen a film that is anything like it. It's a timely, you know, it's a, t it's, it's a good time to put this film onto DVD because it, it sticks in people's memories. There are lots of people that I know that this is one of their favourite films that had quite a strong impact on them. And again, it's because of its, you know, it's an, it's an unusual and very intelligently played out subject. So, um, uh, you know, any, any film stands, the, any good film stands the test of time, and hopefully this will too. It's, you know, it's, uh, there's no difference. Making a film is making a film, whether it costs, you know, $2 million or $102 million. It, I, I don't think really, as far as acting goes, there isn't, there isn't really any difference. There's a lot more going on in big budget films, but that's not necessarily directly impacts an actor. As an actor, you take on a part and you play the character, and you know that the, there, there isn't much difference. There's maybe one of the advantages of lower budget movies is that someone like Stephen Polykoff can c keep complete control, which is very important. If you're a director like him that has such a vision and such a particular vision, it's his own thing, and is you know it, he. In, in doing a film like Close My Eyes, can c completely keep control. He hasn't got the influence of a studio breathing down his neck saying, well, what about if you beef up the scene when, which, um, you know, is not what Stephen's work is about. It's, m it's much more subtle than that. So that's, that's a, the advantage of maybe not being in a huge budget movie. But I, personally, I, I don't really see, it, it, there's not much difference to me. It's all about playing a character. Um, finally, you're constantly linked to James Bond. How do you feel about this? <laughs> what can I say? There's, um, there are worse things to be linked to. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>